Hey, good morning, Hub City family. Um, we are in day three of Holy Week um, as we are preparing our hearts for Easter and kind of the gravity of what Easter represents for the people of God. Um, and as we take the time to look back at kind of the OG week uh, where Jesus was on earth, um, things are moving along for Jesus. Um, Jesus knows where he's going, what he has to do, but his disciples are still a little bit in the dark, kind of wondering, man, what is going on here? What's all this commotion, all this craziness? We've been with this guy for multiple years and something seems to be building. He's talking about his death. We're back in Jerusalem. Uh, what's going on? So we're going to focus today on a well-known passage of scripture of two people close to Jesus who have radically different reasons and agendas for following Jesus. So we're going to read from Matthew's account of Jesus in chapters 26 verses 1 through 16. So if you have a Bible or a smartphone or you memorized it, congratulations, but get that out. Turn to Matthew 26. Um, we did a teaching on this in our John series, um, the account in the Gospel of John. Um, so for further encouragement and kind of diving into this passage, I would encourage you to go to our website, go to our podcast, and go back and listen to that. I believe it's John chapter 12. Um, I would recommend going back to that. But from John's account, we know that what we're about to read, the woman in the story we're about to read is Mary Magdalene. Um, and she was one of Jesus' closest followers, and the other disciple um, is obviously Judas that we're going to read as he is named. Um, and we are given this kind of juxtaposition between two people in close relationship with Jesus during the time right before his kind of earthly death. Um, one uses the relationship to serve, and one uses the relationship to be served. And we'll kind of see how that plays out. So Matthew chapter 26 I'm going to read a little bit before our, what we're going to talk about um, so we get the context. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, this is verse 1, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. And they said, Not during the feast, lest there be any uproar among the people. Verse 6. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment. She poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. So in her relationship with Jesus, Mary was interested in what she could give, and even how much she could give. In his relationship with Jesus, Judas was interested in what he could get. This was obviously an abuse of his closeness with Jesus, but seemed like money and greed and success were more of a savior to Judas than Jesus was to him. Um, and we'll get to this tomorrow, but Jesus himself even said that he came not to be served, but to serve. Um, so Mary is in step with what Jesus would have done and did on so many occasions. Um, and the key thought I'd like us to be thinking about today as a community is kind of focused on Mary's gift to Jesus. Um, it wasn't just about perfume. It wasn't just about how expensive it was or how valuable it was, but it seems like the heart behind Mary's actions was love and devotion for Jesus. She couldn't help herself, but what she did is she, all she could do was give all she possibly could. This expensive ointment was obviously unique to her, but similar to the parable of the talents we looked at yesterday, we are all given something, if not just breath in our lungs. The question becomes, is our love and devotion to Jesus one where we find ourselves compelled to give all we possibly can? And if we believe that, if you're like, yes, it is, then situations like quarantine right now, 
when there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of fear of scarcity. There's a fear of the unknown. As followers of Jesus, we don't need to subscribe to that fear. Instead, we move f- towards giving all that we have to give, all we could possibly give. If our hope and trust is in Jesus, a virus doesn't stop us, but provides a challenge. How can we get creative and generous with what we have to give? Then I hope this sparks encouragement and thought today as you look at your life, you look at what you have, as we take time to think about Jesus on this day of Holy Week, inspired by Mary's action to, to say all she could do was give all she possibly could. And I pray for us as a community, I pray that we have a day today of generosity, we have a heart of generosity and not a fear of love and giving because of our Savior and our devotion to Him. We'll see you tomorrow. Love you guys.